Scissor-tailed flycatchers are slender, stout-billed kingbirds with very long, deeply forked tails. They are pale gray birds with blackish wings, black tails with white edges, and salmon pink flanks that extend to underwing patches that are very conspicuous in flight. Males are more intensely colored and have longer tail feathers than females and immatures. Within their range, scissor-tailed flycatchers are one of the most notorious roadside birds. They are easily visible at 65 miles per hour if you keep your eyes peeled along fence rows from the passenger side of the car. Their pale color can make them hard to spot against the sky, but their long tails create an unmistakable silhouette that is eye-catching both when at rest and in flight. This tail proves useful as they expertly catch insects mid-air with sharp turns and twists. Scissor-tailed flycatchers often eat grasshoppers, crickets, and beetles. They usually forage between ground level and 30 feet off the ground, snatching insects from the air or gleaning them from vegetation. Between insect catching flights, they return to a perch on a fence, wire, or tree branch. Often, a scissor-tailed flycatcher will swallow a small prey item during the flight back to its perch, but large items will be beat against the perch before eating them. Occasionally, scissor-tailed flycatchers capture insects directly from sparsely vegetated ground. On rare occasions, they forage for insects or berries by hopping from branch to branch in live oak, post oak, red mulberry, or hackberry, or by hovering near trees. In these areas, scissor-tailed flycatchers make sounds and have a call that sounds like this. The scissor-tailed flycatcher flies in straight lines with fast wing beats and its tail folded. It also often hovers with its tail spread or makes abrupt turns in midair. Scissor-tailed flycatchers breed in savannas with scattered trees, shrubs, and patches of brush in the south central US and just over the border into northern Mexico. They also breed in areas with a mixture of feeding perches, open space, and trees for nesting, which includes towns, farm fields, pastures, and landscaped areas like golf courses or parks. Scissor-tailed flycatchers migrate in large bickering flocks, spending the winter in southern Mexico and Central America in humid savannas, pastures, agricultural lands, shrublands, villages, towns, and the edges of tropical deciduous forests. They tend to wander widely on their way to and from the wintering grounds, a habitat they share with fork-tailed flycatchers and tropical kingbirds. During spring and fall, they may show up almost anywhere in North America, as far north as British Columbia and Nova Scotia. In some populations, the male continue roosting in groups throughout the breeding season, but breeding birds tend to forage alone or in pairs. Males arrive before females in the early spring to establish and defend territories. After pairing up, both males and females chase and attack other individuals that intrude onto their territory. Trespassing happens frequently, especially in the early morning, so keep an eye out if you see these birds as you may be treated to an amazing aerial chase. They attack most other birds including sparrows, doves, mockingbirds, grackles, shrikes, blue jays, and even hawks. Males have a spectacular courtship display. The bird sharply rises and descends in flight while its long tail streamers open and close. Sharp calls are heard throughout and there may be backflips in the air. Pairs are monogamous within a breeding season, but don't always reunite in later years. The male and female travel together throughout their territory in search of a nest site in open prairie, mesquite prairie, parks, gardens, pastures, croplands, 
roadsides, or salt marsh edges. When they find a potential nest site in an isolated tree or shrub, they both hop around and test out different spots by pressing themselves against the branches. They choose an open site that's sheltered from the prevailing wind and often shaded by some foliage. Fun fact, the scissor-tailed flycatcher uses many human products in its nest, such as string, cloth, paper, carpet fuzz, and cigarette filters. One study of nests in an urban area in Texas found that artificial materials accounted for 30% of the weight of nests. When it comes to conservation, scissor-tailed flycatcher numbers declined by about 31% between 1966 and 2014, according to the North American Breeding Bird Survey. Partners in Flight estimates a global breeding population of 9.5 million with 92% breeding in the U.S. and 50% spending some part of the year in Mexico. The species rates an 11 out of 20 on the Continental Concern score and is not on the 2014 State of the Birds watch list. To safeguard nest and perch sites, researchers suggest leaving strips or patches of brush intact when clearing brush or applying herbicides. The species may be expanding its range in response to forest clearing on both breeding and wintering grounds. Severe thunderstorms or tornadoes can destroy many nests when they interrupt the otherwise hot, sunny weather of the breeding season. Well, there you have it, everyone. This has been everything you need to know about the scissor-tailed flycatcher. I apologize if the mic quality is noticeably different from my previous videos. It's actually been quite the struggle to get this video out. Um, recently, the PC I've been using uh, stopped working due to a power outage and since then I've just been trying to make this video on my laptop but there were a lot of problems with the mic so I ended up just having to use my phone like with my old videos and if you wanted to know this is my third time recording audio um, but anyways if you made it this far into the video I really appreciate you and thank you so much for watching I am officially back home for the summer once again after completing my first year at Texas A&M um, after transferring from the Corpus Christi campus. So once again, uh, I should be able to get some more videos out, but as always, no promises. If you like what you see and want more, feel free to show your support by subscribing to the channel. It's a free small gesture that goes a long way. But until next time, everyone, I hope you have a great day and take care.